The purpose of this evening's video is to uh, just do a FPM sweep alignment on an old Hanimax 8-track um, recorder player that I uh, got in the workshop. Just really to demonstrate a uh, rough and ready way of doing a sweep on this. The reason why I say it's rough and ready is I haven't got any instructions for this uh, particular radio or music centre sort of thing it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just run through basically what I'm doing. I'm using uh, the Hewlett Packard 675A sweeping signal generator which has also got a um, built-in detector as well and is designed to show uh, response waveforms of uh, transformers and tuned circuits through uh, the uh, XY mode of the scope. So I take the XY output from the signal generator and it will display the response on the, on the scope. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the RF output from the um, signal generator uh, and it's being swept with a 10.7 MHz signal and that's fed into the front end of the, uh, the, the tuner, the FM tuner. The audio is taken out of the audio uh, amplifier and it's fed back into the uh, 675 uh, through the marker adder port. Um, a bad description for um, the front terminal really because really it's a it's the detected um, RF signals it's got a built-in detector as I say and you can use its internal detector but it's got a 50 ohm resistor in parallel which means you can't really what you can't use it for uh, pre-amplifier levels because it just shorts the pre-amplifier out so we're using the uh, marker adder um, and we're feeding the audio as I say straight out of the pre-amplifier into the marker adder and that uh, modulates the uh, vertical and horizontal to give you the correct um, waveform. So basically one, one output is the, uh, the, the output of the radio and the other one is a, a, um, a triangular wave. So when you're in XY mode it gives you the phase difference and this is the response I'm getting. Um, and as you can see here you see the bird in the middle of the, the trace. I don't, that's not too bright for you, not too glary, but I've got a birdie marker in the middle. The birdie is being generated by 10.7 megahertz input and I'm feeding into the external from the external marker port on the uh, 675 and the Roden Schwartz that's actually behind the camera uh, so you might see my hand move around the back of the camera is generating the 10.7 reference and we use that because then we know where the centre of the uh, band pass is. If we haven't got the marker on like that it's, it's impossible to know exactly where the 10.7 megahertz um, reference point is if the, the uh, 675 generator drifts slightly. Um, if I move the generator off, off tune I've got no idea where 10.7 megahertz is anymore but if the marker generator is there I can see it's moved over here and I can for, uh, correct the S curve accordingly. So let's get it in the middle of the, the trace uh, just turn the Wilkes per division up a bit so we can just turn the amplifier up a bit I suppose that would just give you a little bit more gain and so we, this is our crossing point here the 10.7 and we need to keep that if possible and not all the uh, radios will do it try and keep that in the center of the uh, the crossing band so if I ground the um, the input of channel 2 you can see that's our zero point and that's our I'm going to use that as our um, 0 volt point so we want the S curve to start here the centre of the S is there, so we want a uniform height for either side, so we want say two divisions here and two divisions there and that's our crossing point with the marker in the middle. Now it's not always, as I say, not always possible to achieve that, but we can certainly uh, do our best with this uh, signal generator. Let's uh, I'll make it as best I can for you to see. Um, turn, turn that off, you don't need that. I'll give you some display markers there as well, some graticule mar uh, illumination. So there's our, as I say, there's our curve. What I want to do is try and get this marker into the, this point here, so that the S is uniform, and the, as I say, the marker's in the middle. So let's have a go at twiddling some of these transformers. Now I've no idea what which one's which, but I think I've, I think I'm guessing that this one is the f the first IF, and you see that the gains already come up. Um, but ideally, I want to move the. Uh, bring the, the, the lower limb down and bring, push the upper limb up so we've got a uniform uh, sonicidal wave on either side of that marker. Let's try the other, let's try the other uh, next transformer. Again it's coming through more so what I'm going to do now is going to reduce the 
RF input to the to the front end, so we don't activate too much AGC. Moving up further, you see the amplitude is really coming up now. That's come up quite a lot actually. And you see the marker still too far up, um, but it's pretty close on 10.7. It's a little bit high, so we'll go back to the other IF transformers. We can push that higher. It's got a pretty nice uniform shape, but we're just off frequency with the uh, marker. Now we'll be able to move the marker in a minute with the discriminator core, but I haven't moved, haven't adjusted that yet. Uh, I'm just going to adjust the 675 to get that into the centre of the range. So we know still that that's the marker there. You can see it is the um, is a 10.7. So now I'm going to try and adjust the primary discriminator. All that's doing is bringing it down. And you see the marker's starting to move into the range where you want it, but unfortunately we're losing the top of the top of the waveform even more. So let's try the secondary of the, of the discriminator. And you see there it's coming in nicely now. Ah, that's much better. Okay, and just the other side of the discriminator. It's not so easy to see that marker anymore, so I'm not going to try and give you a different shape marker. Let's try a horizontal marker. Okay, we put the HP is allows you to generate horizontal markers as well, which is really quite good because you can actually so you can see there between that fuzzy comb that's our marker position. Our S curve is starting to look a lot better than it was earlier on. It would still be nice to get that top limb up a little bit higher, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to achieve that. That is pretty good, actually. Let's just try adjusting the primary of the IF again. No, body up a little higher, actually. Second IF. Quite pleased with that, actually. Discriminator. Ideally, I would like to get the top end a little bit higher and the bottom a little bit lower. So you can do it, but you lose the the marker moves off the end of the scale. We're running down here now, so that's no good. We need to, that's the most important thing to keep that crossing point at the right point. Still messing around with the high F strip, uh, the uh, discriminator. Whatever I do, I cannot get that point any higher. I'm quite pleased with that actually. That's uh, pretty well aligned. As I say, it's not a particularly good hi-fi uh, stereo system, but it it should be a lot better for the, after this modification. See, I'll actually push that up a little bit higher there. Let's try this. There we go, that's a bit better. So that's basically what you want to achieve. You want to try and keep the, the 10.7 in the centre. Uh, you keep a uniform limb either side of the 0 volt line. Uh, turn the gain down a bit more. Turn the marker down a bit. And just keep twiddling left and right until you get the best possible waveform. It's quite therapeutic, I quite enjoy sitting here just tweaking these windings. You know. And sometimes actually I find if you if you get to a point where you sort of get in a mess and you just can't see you sure you had it better than it, better before and you've sort of been working for a lot of twenty minutes and you can't get the adjustment any any good. Re just wind all the cores back to wherever and then start from scratch and you, I tend to find that sometimes you'll start off you'll get a better result. Um, because you'll often find you just what you wind the windings just all one way, and then you just bottom them out, and then you find that you know you can't get the waveform back, so you just have to start again. But that's pretty good. It's uh, I think that's the best I'm going to get it. Just put a marker back again so you can see it. Let's put a vertical marker. Okay, it's slightly above the line. Let's bring that back. See a nice sharp defined marker there. 
make that a bit narrower. There we go. So that's pretty good, really. So basically, that's what you want to achieve. Um, a good S curve will give you good uh, load stereo dis um, FM distortion. Uh, pretty give you the best AM rejection as well, uh, and it's. Uh, it will give you better stereo decoding as you discriminate as often a stereo tuner where it's more likely to lose its stereo um, uh, lock if the discriminator is not set correctly. Anyway, thanks for watching. 